I describe my businesses as my children. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I consider them, I've always said this to people, that if you take care of something, be it a business or a child or anything you care about, it comes at some point where it takes care of you. And that's how I see definitely Starfish Company. It supports itself. It supports many people, actually. You know, there's, I think, 11 employees here, and it takes good care of them. And, and it has a really strong customer base. I think it takes care of them. So, you know, that's kind of my theory about your businesses. My name is Karen Bell. I am a resident of Cortez Village. My family has been a, a large part of this community since the late 1800s. They came here from North Carolina. They are fishing people. I'm fortunate enough today to be able to work in this industry. And what do I do? I, I do all sorts of things. I work at AP Bell Fish Company, which is my family's business. I also work here at Starfish Company, which is my little business, and pretty much entrenched in the fishing industry of Florida. Probably the earliest memories I have are of spending Sundays out here at my grandmother's house. And it was a big, huge dinner, although it was always at 1 o'clock, which my mother always thought was odd because to her dinner was at, you know, 6 o'clock. And it was just almost like a big conglomeration of people. Some were family, some were extended family, some were just people in the neighborhood. And um, literally there might be 20 to 50 people there, depending upon what time of the year it was. My grandmother had... I think it's, there are nine siblings in her family, seven of which were women, and a lot of them would come help her on Sunday. You know, there'd always be like at least three or four of the, um, her sisters. And generally, the, the main thing was always either fish or steak or shrimp. She made excellent food. Um, it was all, of course, relatively southern. She made a really wonderful, I still remember this, banana pudding with vanilla wafers around the edge. Do you ever have that? Oh, my God. They always kind of had to drag us out here because we would prefer to be at the barn with our horses. But um, once we'd get down here, we'd have fun. We'd play on the sand dunes. They had kind of filled in some of the um, fiddler crab flats. And there were net spreads all over the water, so we used to crawl across the net spreads. And so it was fun. We got to spend a lot of time, you know, kind of picking up things out of the water and just roaming around down by the shoreline. Dad wanted me to go to Gainesville because of the gators. He just loved the gators. He still loves the gators. So um, I went up there for about a year, but I didn't do very well. And it was the first time away from home. I wasn't very disciplined. I didn't go to class a lot. And so I picked up, I called my dad, and I said, I'm going to go down to Florida Atlantic, which is a smaller school in Boca Raton. And he said, no, you're not. And so I called one of the drivers. I still can't believe I did this. I told him, I told the driver to bring one of the company trucks up one weekend. I rented an apartment down there on my own. I'm still shocked that I got away with all this. The driver brought the truck up. He must have okayed it with my dad, I guess, because I know he just didn't steal the truck. But he came up, piled up all my stuff. I followed him down to Boca, and, um, and then I got back on track at a smaller school. So I finished my degree down at Boca Raton, Business Administration Marketing. While I was in Boca, that was a big place for IBM. And I actually started working at IBM, and I had a tentative job offer but I can remember I called my dad and I said, Dad, I, I want to come home. I told him I wanted to work at the dock and he just was thinking I was nuts because he said that the fishing industry, there were so many things impacting it negatively and he felt in the 80s there were um, state regulations, federal regulations, just image issues and he wanted to see me, I think, more in a nine to five type job. But I told him, I miss this coast. I don't know if you've ever been to the East Coast. It's beautiful and it's nice, but this is home to me. And I, I missed this area and the people in my family. And um, he, he was like, well, you know, if that's what you want to do. So I came home. But I remember sometime close to the beginning, he told me five things that were just really important, kind of like his golden rules. And I don't even know if I can remember them all offhand. Always pay for your fish promptly. Give good weights, you know, never take advantage of the fishermen. Things like keep your money as much as you can locally. If you're going to buy goods and services, try as hard as you can to keep it within your community. You know, see that it's doing what you think is the proper thing for it. I can't remember, there's another one I had, I was thinking about the other day and now it slipped my mind. I really ought to write them down and frame them or something because they're classic things. That's why I think he's as respected as he is. I think he's a real fair and he's a very honest man and very principled, so I'm lucky to have him as a guide. 
I always say to someone who's never come here that it's almost like stepping back in time as you drive into the village because initially the houses look different. They're all little tiny cottages. They have boats and nets and gear all over the yard. And then if you get out and you start talking to people, they're relatively friendly and they're happy to talk to you about what it is that they do because that's a big important thing. We want people to understand why we're here, what we're doing. At one point, you could walk the entire shoreline from one end all the way down to the fish preserve because it's almost like the shoreline belonged to everybody. I mean, it was where everyone worked, it was where they played, it was where they, they could just freely come on their own time frame. Somebody put a fence up on one of the yards, somebody bought one of the houses. When that fence went up, it was really weird because all of a sudden, you, you know, you're walking and then you're stopped. And just a strange feeling because you know, years ago, that's not how people looked at the waterfront, not like that that was their chunk of land. It was kind of like, yeah, you live there, but these were your family and neighbors and everyone just, you know, was all over the place. I've been all over the world, traveled pretty extensively, um, and I always, always want to come back here. I mean, there's something about the physical location, just the beauty of this place, the, I think the simplicity of it and the bay, Sarasota Bay on the end is just gorgeous. I mean, last night I even, I stopped, I went over to the edge of the dock and I watched the sunset. I mean, it was beautiful. Just this, it turned really, really red and then it kind of, as it sunk into the horizon, it turned this pinky orange that cast a, this beautiful color. There's just something that just draws me back here. And then on top of that, the people are amazing to me. They are straightforward, they're funny, they're smart, they work hard. I, I just think that that's who I want to be around, people who are true, they're, they're very real.